After Bakersfield Christian, our game of the week. We'll get to that in a minute. Big battle for the South Sequoia League. But first, a couple appetizers to hold you over before that feast of games we call Friday Night Live. We start with Miramonte hosting South. They're still looking for their first win of the season. And it's South getting off to the fast start. The Rebels so good they fool our cameraman out there. That's Davion Williams getting the carry. He takes it over 80 yards to put South up 7-0. So Miramonte trying to get back into it. But right here, they lose the ball. South able to bobble it, finally able to recover it. They fall out there at one of a number of turnovers in this game. Later, Jared Carter gets the carry to the outside. He fights his way through the crowd there. And Carter. That is a touchdown for South. They go on to hand Miramonte their sixth loss in a row. Rebels, they win it big, setting up the clash next week against Highland, 34-0. Meanwhile, East hosting Tehachapi. The Warriors coming down the mountain, and in the second, quarterback Chris Garcia pretending to hand the ball off and actually passes it to Luke Soto. That is such a tricky play there. Touchdown for the Warriors. Kick no good. Score 6 0 to Hatchapi. Meanwhile, East, their quarterback, Michael Doton, handing the ball off to Jonathan Monroe. That touchdown ties the game. Again, missed extra points. Keeps it, uh, excuse me, the kick's good. So, Blades up 7 6 at that point. Early in the second half now to Hatchapi, inches from the goal line. They go with the quarterback keeper, Chris Garcia, keeping it himself for the touchdown. They go for two. And they hang on to win it. They, in fact, extend their lead, winning this 28 to 7. So that's just a couple. Now we've got the big slate. Week 8, but already the battle for the South Sequoia League. Who takes control between Shafter and BCHS? Plus an emotional night you just saw there at Centennial. While the Golden Hawks try to stay perfect in league. Friday Night Live starts right after this. Coming up on 23FNL, the Eagles have been soaring through the, through the South Sequoia League for years. Could they get past an emerging shafter? Plus, Bakersfield tries to rebound from last week's loss to Garces, while the Rams and Golden Hawks look to make it two straight. Friday Night Live starts right now. You're watching Friday Night Live, high school game of the week. Brought to you by Kern Schools Federal Credit Union. Together, we have something special. Well, welcome into another edition of Friday Night Live. I'm Stephen Hicks. And I'm Brandon Johansson. Still three weeks left in the regular season, but a big one tonight. That's right. Bakersfield Christian has dominated the South Sequoia League in recent memory. The team has never lost a league game in Darren Carr's three years at the helm, but tonight they met a familiar face. Our game of the week, Shafter traveling to play Bakersfield Christian. It's the first time back at the school for the Generals head coach Gerald Perucci since he coached the Eagles for their first section title game back in 2013, and he's doing it from the press box there. Brayden Wingle. Starting things to Chris Gutierrez. Quickly 7-0 Eagles in that first quarter. Later, later, Eagles driving again. Wingle to Myron Randall. And this is looking like it could be a blowout. 14-0 Bakersfield Christian. The push-ups <laughs> getting going early. But Shafter gets through and forces the block punt. But they can't fall on it for the touchdown. Instead, a safety puts them on the board. So now it's the offense's turn. Alex Aguilar to Gerardo Lara gets the Generals in position, and Aguilar would keep it on the quarterback sneak here, making it a 14 to 9 game. But the Eagles' offense started rolling. Wingle airing it out again to Davion Miller. That's good, just short of the end zone. Later, that connection we've seen every week. Wingle to Alex Wallace, meaning more push-ups coming for the band. They're hurrying down there. Again, BCHS exploding just before the half. Later, Gutierrez on defense this time, taking it to the house for six. The push-ups continue, as does the Eagles' streak in the South Sequoia League. They are now 4-0. Well, one league starts to get some clarity. Another, anyone's guess who can win this one. Yeah, no kidding. The Southwest Yosemite League is open as ever after Garces' walk-off win over the Drillers last week. The Drillers traveling to Frontier this week to take on the Titans. We'll pick it up in the beginning of the second half. BHS down by one. The Drillers fumble, and it's recovered by Carson Widholm here. That's a potentially big moment for Frontier, but that turnover doesn't hold up after an inadvertent whistle. Later, quarterback Caden Ochoa taking advantage. He finds Isaac Jernigan, who cuts through the defense there, takes in for the touchdown to put the drillers up. 
BHS trying to add on here with a field goal, but that field goal is blocked to keep it at a five point driller lead. So Frontier would try to come back in this one, but unfortunately for them, Caden Ochoa finishes this one off. He tosses it to Keontae Bell for the touchdown. That seals the deal. Final score, drillers 26, Frontier 14. So Bakersfield response from last week. Liberty tried to make it two straight, up 21-0 at one point on Stockdale, but it's a one possession game in the second half when Max Shores breaks free and comes right into your living room there. And once you get in the red zone, you know what that sets up. Sammy Stewart Jr. running downhill, 27-13 Patriots. So Stockdale on a fourth down, taking a shot at the end zone. Jalen Smith has time, has a receiver. He just overthrows him a little bit. Now the Mustangs would add a field goal late in this one, but it's not enough. As Liberty wins, they improve now the 2-0 in that Southwest Yosemite League. Well, meanwhile, Bailey Schweitzer on everyone's mind at Centennial. Football a chance to give the community a few hours of a distraction. Big game in the SWYL. Isaiah Martin continues his big running. A kid it is just so hard to stop. He uh, pounds it in there to give the Rams the lead. Rather, later, Rams back in the red zone. They give it to Martin again. He's just as much of a sure thing as you can when you run the ball to give Garces another touchdown. So Daniel would answer though. Will Alexander across the middle there to Trenton Clark get there in the red zone. And then on that same drive, Alexander, this time he just keeps the ball himself. He'd rush it in on the QB keeper. That makes it just a one possession game. But despite Centennial here playing some good defense, here's Martin just trucking his way through. Centennial able to strip the ball right there. But despite that, Parsons is able to hang on late. Forget about their 0-5 start. They're now 2-0 in league. What a turnaround. Meanwhile, Ridgeview at West. Third quarter, this is the Vikings quarterback, Gabriel Salcido, handing off to Leona Laulo Jr. for the touchdown. Score 28-21 West. But later in the third, Ridgeview looking to respond. Justin Hinzo finds Dalen Dugraff and Reed. Yeah, he's good. He ties the game at 28 apiece. About two minutes left in the third. They give it to Ruben Cruz. He fumbles the ball, but recovers it and able to power his way into the end zone. Now, the Wolfpack with a 35-28 lead, and they would then pull away early in the fourth. On the handoff to Elijah Alexander-Williams. He runs it in for, from the 30 there. Some hard running there as Ridgeview comes from behind to win this one, 48-34. So plenty of exciting games, and we're only in week two of league. Yeah, and like we talked about, league so important. Garst is 0-5, now 2-0, and just before it doesn't just even matter. You. That's, that's what it takes. Well, still the cop. We've got some big games, including Independence. They've finished late. Could they start early? Meanwhile, McFarland hosting Rossi on homecoming night. 23 FNL back right after this. Welcome back to 23 FNL. We know Lucas Lacero has an intensity matched by few coaches here in Kern County, but the Falcons head coach seems to have translated that to an intensity and a flair for the dramatic. The last two weeks, Independence has won on their final drive of the game. Traveling today to face Golden Valley. There is the Golden Valley Bulldog, the living mascot itself. Opening kickoff, Falcons Ramon Henderson would receive the ball here and just run all the way with it. You, who needs a flair for the dramatic when you start that early? Touchdown for Independence. Now, ahead in a matter of seconds with the lead at 8 0. Later in the first, Falcons Zachariah Castelli on Aaron announcer Ramon Hernandez for the touchdown. Independence up 14 0. Now in the second, Castelli running the ball in himself for the touchdown. And Independence, look at that, 5 and 2. They would pull away in this one to win it 30 to 7. Well, for fan pick of the week, it was our most convincing vote of the season. McFarland winning in an absolute landslide, giving us the chance to highlight the Cougars program on what turned out to be homecoming night. Head on to Twitter to vote for this coming week. But for now, we head out to McFarland as they take on Orosi early in the game here. Number seven, Frankie Lopez decides to keep the ball himself, takes it in for the touchdown. The extra point, though, would be blocked by Orosi, making it only 6-0 McFarland. Later, Gary, Gary Huerta here handing it off to number 16, John Duncan. He would run it very, very far. A nice little move there to get out of trouble and take it all the way for the touchdown. But Orosi's extra point also no good. That would mean that the game is tied at six. More from the Cardinals here. Huerta, he's going to drop back this time, and this time he's going to pass it to number 18, who would take it in for the touchdown. The two-point conversion 
all was no good here, so lots of conversions and extra points not good in this game. 12 to 6, the McFarland is down, but just before the break, Huerta hands it off to number 7, Jerry Huerta, for the touchdown. Another Huerta. Orosi goes on to win this one, 38 to 12. Are they brothers? Are they cousins? Someone add us on Twitter. We don't know. Foothill looking for their first win and welcoming in a 3-3 three three North team. Picked this one up in the third. Foothill down 34 to 6 and trying to get back into it, but the pass picked off there by Victor Boggs and taken all the way back into the red zone. Foothill band, they're trying to stay positive there. It's good stuff. Next play, Boggs back in on offense now. Gets the carry and carries it into the end zone. 40 to 6 stars lead. Late in the fourth. Now it's the quarterback, Bailey West, finding Chris Romero. That end zone grab, good enough for the touchdown as North improves to 4 and 3. We run away with this one, 47 to 6. Well, we talked about the close games in break one. Not, Not so, so close. close to these last two games. Yeah, no kidding. Couple blowouts there. Unfortunate for some of those teams. Unable to get their first win today. Well, we had a close selection tonight with our top plays. And coming up, we'll show you who takes home the top honors. Plus, Bakersfield Christian Shaft, our game of the week this week. Where are we going next week? We'll tell you right after the break. 23 FNL, back right after this. So that's McFarland. They just won our fan pick of the week. Very excited. You can vote online for next week's games. But the other sign that we have for our game of the week tonight, it was at Bakersfield Christian for their hosting of Shafter. And we are getting to the time of the year, Brandon, where these games are starting to decide league championships. Yeah, they're very important. And you want to have that board. So to find out where the board's going next week, at least for game of the week, our own Alice and Gargaro revealing where we're heading next week. There's just one perfect team left in Kern County, but here they've got something to say about it. Yeah! So that is undefeated Highland traveling to play South. You will not want to miss that. Meanwhile, top plays Ridgeview and West. The handoff to Elijah Alexander Williams. And check out Williams, who just makes something out of nothing here. Run in here. Take another look at this. We don't have maybe the replay. Anyway, nope. he broke the top of the tackles there as Ridgeview goes on to win this 48-34. <laughs> on to top play number two. Now, this actually didn't even make the highlights because we had so many from BCHS. Davon Miller here. Watch the stiff arm. Wow, oh. that is a vicious stiff arm. Then he's got the little juke move here. Man, look, getting the moves there. Sets the Eagles up for the touchdown. Watch it again. There's that slow-mo stiff arm. And then the there's the juke. Shooting. Man, that's Miller. brutal. They roll over Shafter tonight. Well, our top play, Isaiah Martin. It's, it's really hard to take this guy down. Watch <laughs> him with a defender on him. Just spin, and oh. then it's off. And that's a touchdown for Martin. It's just, how do you defend that? An absolute truck. Teams in the Southwest Assembly League are trying to learn because check this out. We got the score, the uh, standings graphic up. Garces, they started 0-5, but they've rattled off two straight wins. They're now tied with Liberty for first in that conference. Brandon, I don't even know what to say at this point. That's the beauty of league play, though. Everything that happened before doesn't even matter. Look at BHS in third. Garces at 2-5 and five in second. Three weeks left here in the regular season, and it's anybody's guess who's going to win it's this beautiful. league as well as a couple others. Absolutely beautiful. That's what we love about football. Well, for Brandon Johansson, I'm Stephen Hicks. Thank you so much for watching another edition of Friday Night Live. Again, our game of the week next week is Highland traveling to play South. Have a good night.